Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm in Chiang Mai, Thailand. There was actually a really rare plant exhibition yesterday called Lana International Exotic. Please do check out those episodes. And I was so brainwashed by rare plants for the last few days that I'm in the mood for some of the more common and interesting plants. And we're in the high elevation area in Chiang Mai. And this is the Kim, Kim Tiang plant market. Please forgive me, Thai people, if I mispronounce. But there's actually a lot of tiny nursery stores here. And I'm really, really excited to show you what they are growing here. And some of these plants are actually a little bit more affordable. There's some of your landscapey type plants, some of your more common house plants. And where possible, I don't know, I don't see any price tags on this so I don't think I'll be able to give you the prices but I'm super curious to see some of the prices on these and we do have a mysterious guest making a cameo in this video so stick around all right these are actually very simple looking but actually they have really gold, gorgeous silver foliage and look at the shape of the leaves this is the lavender gold creek it's a variety of the lavender that if you run your hands through or if you put your nose to the leaf it smells like the lavender flowers so this is one that smells really good all the time. It is very hard to come by in Indonesia. As a lavender, it likes full sun, fast draining soil. I have not mastered the care, but again, this is in impossible to find there. And I'm so happy to see them in this nursery grown in so many pots. I think they might actually like a little bit of a cooler air, maybe higher elevation, I don't know. But this is a lavender that really, really smells amazing. And I'm sure it's got very good mosquito deterrent properties as well. This is the variegated Heterexa helix. It's a uh, English ivy. Very, very common plant, probably very fast growing and invasive. These are really beautiful and they actually look very intimidating in a bush like this. And maybe that is how they are grown in a landscape setting, but I actually quite prefer them in little pots because these are actually impatience. Uh, and then this, the leaves are actually quite wonderful. Impatience, a lot of them have really wonderful leaves, but I did not thought that they flower so beautifully. I love the little growth point that they put out. I'm pretty sure these are shade loving flowering plants, but I might be wrong. I've cared for a few and I keep killing them. Maybe the online care tips aren't accurate for my tropical climate kind of care. I don't know. And I'm pretty sure some of these impatients are actually endemic to Southeast Asia. So this is a plant that's really, really interesting. I wonder how they fare indoors because their leaves are really, really gorgeous. They make really good like windowsill kitchen plants. Flower looks a bit like an orchid if you ask me. And these are some of the more, not boring, but more classic green variety of the impatience. Please do comment down below if you happen to know a little a thing or two about their care. And this is the white variety actually and look at this. They actually would look really good in like those botanical drawings, like those old timey botanical drawings with all these really intricate uh, flower buds coming out, those leaves that are just forming, they're just expanding in size flowers i quite like the classic white as well we actually saw this in yesterday's exhibition this is native to thailand the name's gonna be on the screen but it grows huge like that it's probably a very fast growing plant this here this is really really interesting the flowers look a little bit like the orchids but the leaves are quite gorgeous look at that it's like dark very dark green with like a burgundy underside they are really really flowering quite profusely they are hanging now, but something tells me they are actually not a hanging type of plant. This is really, really beautiful. The texture on the leaves are just quite something. These above here, I think these are the Calicia repens. Look at how lush they are. Look at that. But this is a plant that gets bald very quickly, so you always have to keep propagating. There are a lot of work to maintain. So to keep them lush like that is actually not the easiest thing. Some begonias here. These ones have particularly uninteresting leaves, but they are very shiny. If you look at them, of course, like they really reflect light really beautifully. And then let me look at the underside. The underside is like green as well. It's not that interesting as compared to those begonias that we care for for the leaves, but they're just blooming. And it brings us joy when we see the plant busting into life and in, in so much energy, because it does expend a lot of energy to put out these beautiful flowers. So in this episode, I actually don't know most of the plants. I don't have a landscaping background and a lot of these plants are actually more of an outdoor setting plants. Feel free to comment down below or share a thing or two if you know about them. It would really help me out a lot. But these are beautiful. They actually look like orchid flowers if you look up close, but this is actually a, a, not a big pot. It's a very compact pot. This is a very compact plant that is flowering insanely well. I wonder how they will do uh, once they have left their greenhouses. 
I wonder if they'll continue to produce flowers over the next few years or maybe these are all like annuals because a lot of the plants that are flowering tend to be annuals so you might have to keep buying them to replace them which is also okay beautiful lotus so Thailand is also famous for their lotus sorry my shadows in the way but let's look at this glorious flower the leaves are also very very stunning and they are actually aquatic so they live in water this one's I think trying to put out a flower bud hello welcome Welcome, Sawadi Cup. <laughs> this one's putting out a new leaf. I guess it's quite cute how they put out the new leaf like that and it pops open into this like round leaf. I'm not very familiar with lotuses and I haven't really spent much time with them. This is probably as close as I have gotten to a lotus. Look at the glistering bit of... I don't know what those are, but I'm sure those are to attract pollinators, but I don't know again. Uh, feel free to comment if you know some interesting things about some of the plants I'm talking about in this video might make interesting topic in a party setting <laughs> Sean, look at this! What's this? I've never seen this before This is a ripsalis It's got little berries Yeah, they form berries right on along the... I don't even know what you call these, the leaves but they're a jungle cacti so, Why are you so knowledgeable? I don't know these things I don't know much about them, I just know that they tend to do these things I've never seen berries at Ripsalis. Yeah, I don't know if so these are cute. berries or yeah, these are berries, I think. So do you think we can grow plants from these berries? How does it work? You can, but you know what? With Ripsalis, you can just cut anything off. You can cut like that off uh -huh. and stick it in soil. Or you can, if you want to, yeah, you can just cut like this off and stick it in soil. Wow. And that will turn into a whole new plant. This can be easily turned into many plants. So nasty people might nick off something. Yeah. Or, or if you look at the nursery floors, you might see some that and has fallen. And I can pick it up from the yeah. floor. Yeah. Are we okay. going to look now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, no, look, there's a flower. Where? Oh yeah, there is. Yeah. It's really hard. I've not really rarely seen the flowers, actually. I think they usually just keep, skip the foreplay and go into the good stuff. Just go right into the fruits. <laughs> 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 but yeah, these are actually very easy growing. They're very forgiving to care for. And they're really like on a shelf, imagine. Like it just really adds a jungle vibe to, to any yeah. setting. They can do well indoors as well. Mm. Yeah. Pretty. Great for Christmas. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know who this is, how could you uh -huh, not? Uh -huh. <laughs> this is Irene from Leaping Around. She's joining me and my mom for a little while here at Kam Tiang. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Oh, and they're selling moss. Oh. How cute. Of wow. course. <laughs> I know you're trying hard to be to try to look interested impressed. and impressed, but you're probably not. Yeah, but I'm, I'm impressed. Like this is interesting because this can expand and grow into. It can cover the entire garden. It's great for small. landscaping, like yeah. you know, on the rocks and stuff. And terrarium like people, okay. yeah, they would love it. Mm. <laughs> Rolling. <gasps> what a beautiful selection of begonias. Begonias, I feel have the most spectacular leaves. Sorry, aroids, but look at that. How could an aroid beat that? It is an a cargo shape and I look at the patterns the textures yeah. incredible actually the light is hitting it just right you see all these lights that are bouncing off the leaves I yes. think it's like morning a bit of morning light yeah. hitting it perfectly so it's got everything going for it colors textures very very bit yeah. I have not seen them in this color group though the escargot ones yeah this is beautiful ones. yeah do begonias grow well for you? Uh, yeah, because I think I have a pretty humid condition. Mm -hmm. Do you think there are like fallen leaves here I could... <laughs> Take some poly to propagate. <laughs> okay, so begonias propagate fairly easily with leaves. Yes, and you have a video. Yeah, I do right? have a video. I can link it up above. And how to propagate begonias. So they're yeah. really fun, very rewarding. Plants. Yeah, watch her video on how to propagate. This is actually a Rex begonia. Yeah. Watch her video because I, I don't have one yet. I don't have huh? one where I, I have no success with Rex begonia yet, but yeah, okay. <laughs> one day, someday. But this is really beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Let's let me ask her how much it is so we have an idea. Yeah. One thousand two hundred. One thousand two hundred Thai baht. Yeah. Which works out to be? Can you convert it? I don't know. Thousand two hundred Thai baht. It's like thirty dollars, maybe. Thirty dollars. And it's, is it big? Is it one pot that's with whole thing, or is it like many, many small pots? Do you know? It is one big pot, so it's oh. like this. It's actually not cheap. It's not cheap, but to get it at this size, yeah. it does take a while, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Whoa, what is that? 
This is another Ripsalis. This is one that's a lot more compact, more willowy, if you know what I mean. There's more begonias back there. Look at that. So these are actually massive pots of begonias. They have been cultivated for a very long time to reach to this size. Look at that. Look at all this begonia on begonia action. Wow. I'm actually amazed that I am excited about these plants. Even though I've seen some insanely rare plants yesterday at the show. But begonias are really, really underrepresented. This is really beautiful. Look at the underside. It's all like red. It's a red underside. This is a, a beautiful one. A very, very good booth for begonias, I would say. And this also, this is one pot of begonia. This is quite big with my hand for comparison. This is huge. Let me see the underside. Yeah, the underside is not really interesting on this. So begonias, you really have to check the front and the back of them. There's way more, oh my gosh. There's more begonias back there. Wow, wow, wow. Gorgeous. And there's a bit of apishkia. This is a, a pink variety hanging out down here. But this will very quickly spread out, by the way. But apishkias can spread out really, really quickly and take over a space very fast. Much faster than a begonia can. This one is insanely beautiful. Look at the light hitting it just right. Look at that. Wow. Take a minute here and let that soak in. <laughs> Holy crap, that is a begonia, I think, geogenensis. Possibly, I think that's from Indonesia. Holy crap, look at the size of this. I've never seen one so big. This is huge. This is really, really stunning. And oh my god, there's so much more back here. I wish I can tell you the name of I might shoot the I'm gonna show you the name of the store on the screen in case you wanna find this store. But my goodness, that is also beautiful. And these little ones back here. I've never seen such an extensive begonia collection and they look so happy here. Look at that. Well and that's look at all the leaves that are coming out from inside. Welcome to the world. These, these are I think more like a cane type begonia because of the shape of the leaves. Let me check. Yeah, this is interesting. It's, it looks like a cane, but it has a bit of a Rex type growth habit too. Maybe it might be a hybrid. Maybe a hybrid, I don't know if hybrids between a cane and a Rex begonia can actually occur. But if anything, this is probably close to it. Oh, will you look at that. I really adore this walkway that is just lined with begonia. Wow. And there's actually a little bit more over there. This one is strange. It looks a little bit like the Breverimosa with the coloring. But this is most definitely a Rex begonia. Oh my god, we barely scratched the surface. I'm seeing more, even more begonia. This looks like something that was like from the Cleopatra, which is a bit more common. By the way, most begonias are actually hybrids. They have been hybridized so extensively that sometimes we don't know who the parentage are anymore. This is flowering beautifully. Hello. Gorgeous, look at that. I mean, these are so glorious, these flowers. And then there are more over there and here. John, this one's got like the double loop going for it. You see it? Yes, the That's loop is amazing. I, want, I just usually see one, but this is two. Yeah. Imagine what the, the mature one looks I don't, I don't think it's Let's the. Let's turn the back. Oh my god, look at this. Wow. That's so beautiful. Oh, it's got flowers. Oh yeah. Do you think there are seeds we could take? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how seedlings work with the flowers. Do you have to pollinate them first? I don't yeah, I don't know how to do that. But begonias are naughty plants. They love to like hybridize. With, I don't know if you need to help them along. Look at the back of that. I don't know if you need to help them along with, with hybridization or you need to hand pollinate them. But they hybridize very easily. All of them, I'm pretty sure, are actually hybrids here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But I have to say Rex begonias tend to be more tricky. I have yes. killed so many. Correct. Yeah. They are. The cane ones are easier. Yeah. I think they do like, uh, let's look at the substrate real quick. This is like yes. cocoa chips. 
I think cocoa chips in there. It's very fast draining. Bricks, they're growing on bricks. Yeah, this is bricks and live moss. The moss actually helps retain a bit of the moisture. Yeah. But if you can see how the lady's watering them, she's watering them very, look at how the water's dripping on. She's watering them very violently. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I try not to get water on my begonia leaves. Oh. I was told. Uh, yeah, they can become like this. See, this yeah. water here, and then if it like if you leave it on for too long, it becomes this bacterial or fungal uh, infections on them. But they grow so fast, I think they kind of <laughs> outgrow the older leaves. But yeah, they do get infected sometimes. So with good airflow, like outdoors, like if if it dries up fast enough, yeah. they are okay. Or if you spray fungicide on them, do you do uh, that in no, your garden? No. Oh, you should do like look into it. The antrocol uh, or these are not yeah. environmentally friendly, bad for your health. Uh. I don't know, but I've heard that they actually, they, um, their fungicide actually targets only fungus species. So they don't affect the plants and they don't affect uh, living animals species. Mm, yeah. what you say. Okay. But let's, <laughs> let's, yeah, comment down below and let us yeah. know what you think. Because if it kills something, it must kill other things, no? Not necessarily. <laughs> like if you look at antibiotics and things like that, they do kill specific... The bad stuff. Okay. Yeah, like there's one that kills bacteria, that kills funguses and viruses, there are three different things, three yeah. different types of infection, right? Okay. So yeah, we have to know what they are targeting. Mm. But I, I, don't, I don't think it's that bad, but let me know if, if, if somebody has more a scientific approach on that. That's also beautiful, I've seen that before, that it's actually coming to the market last year into Indonesia. This one? Yeah, ah. but not this big, we're just seeing that. Okay. Yeah, I think the US remains one of the most um, most active hybridizer of begonias. A lot of begonia enthusiasts in the United States. Irene, do you know if begonias are from Asia or if they're from South America? Oh, they are from all over. So you get them also originating from Asia and then parts of Europe and I think, yeah, South America. Mm. India, China. Yeah. I wonder if you can cross like the different begonias from different continents. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you could. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys look at those ferns. So Thailand has some amazing lush ferns and they're probably very, very affordable. How huge is that? Usually in cafes, restaurants and hotels, you would see them. Look at how happy. Just how beautiful. You can't even see the pot. The pot is all the way under here. You can't see the pot anymore. Oh my gosh. And there are some of the larger ones here as well. This is a little bit of a different genus. But they are growing and growing. Look at that. All these new growth points. It's so joyful to see them. Ferns are absolutely fast growers. These are African violets. I really like that the flowers have two tones on them. And the leaves are actually very typical of a African violet. This is absolutely a plant that can flower for you indoors. Very easy to propagate, they will grow rather fast. Now I've heard that the, in, with the care, you don't really want to let the media dry out completely. Uh, I find that you kind of do a little bit here in my very humid tropical climate, especially if it's indoors. You might want to not dry out completely and do not let it dry out for too long, but you don't want to keep it too wet. People actually come here in cars and they just buy things. You can see there's a guy over there loading his, the back of his trunk. And then there's a few cars waiting around, a few trucks. Interest, I, I could spend hours here, but I don't have hours today, unfortunately. And that is definitely like just full sun loving plants, a lot of flowering type plants. And in the shaded area, I do find something. In this area, there's many, many genuses, but primarily usually for outdoor, for landscaping. And sometimes when you go inside a shop, you do tend to see some of the more indoor or shade loving plants. Damn, this is actually really pretty. This and that behind there is a beautiful dracaena that's in a like a tricolor type stripe. This is also interesting. This one comes in a neon color, and that's the first time I'm seeing this. But I'm pretty sure these are quite common. Beautiful glossy leaves. That is the dracaena white aspen. We have a video on this if you want to see how dracaenas are produced with uh, stem cuttings. This is a beautiful dracaena. It's actually quite expensive in my area, in Indonesia. But here I think they are kind of everywhere. Now that is a plant that you probably should help me out with because I don't know. I do have this in Indonesia. A lot of landscaping use this plant. 
but I don't know if it's a Spatifylum or if it's a Dracaena or if a Diefenbachia, it's probably a Diefenbachia actually. If you look at the trunk there, it looks like a Diefenbachia trunk. But I've been proven wrong many times. But this is a probably a very incredibly resilient plant that's probably very easy to care for. I've seen them indoors with like little to no light. But the only thing with them is that every time I see them, they tend to gather a lot of dust. And then there's all these crevices in here that can gather a lot of dust. So that's probably one of the setbacks for this plant. It's like you probably have to clean them up very often. This is the Philodendron dragon. They actually look quite dull to me now that I've seen the variegated one. The variegated ones of these are actually incredibly stunning, but still expensive. I think, I guess this plant really does have a little bit of that banana tropical jungle vibe. That's why they're used so often in landscaping and also interior. Look at how the light is hitting the leaves. Now this year, I'm quite dick this foliage and I'm pretty sure that this is an anthurium. Look at the leaves. I'm pretty sure it's an anthurium because I did have a sneak peek at a bit of a flower action down there. A spadex. That it looks like an aeroid spadex. And I'm pretty sure this is in fact an anthurium, but correct me if I'm wrong. Cyanestrum cordifolium. Beautiful. They can become a clump and spread out very quickly. Just look at the beautiful leaves on these. And they do really well indoors, guys. They are quite uh, bright shade loving plants. This is also a beautiful tree that I oftentimes see indoors. Now there's three living in one pot. That's why it looks a little bit overwhelming. If it was me, I would just have one single trunk and I'll cut it somewhere and let it branch out to maybe two to three branches. And that's it because it can be overwhelming. Look at the shape of the leaves. It's actually really, really nice. It's got this umbrella shape, very similar to a Schifflera. Huh, speaking of variegation, this one is actually a bit variegated. Sometimes you can find some variegated plants amongst the green, some of the leaves, because a lot of them are actually propagated from the variegated plants or tissue cultured, and then they were just thrown here because they didn't have fantastic variegation. And if you take this leaf, this node, and you propagate it, there's a chance you might actually get a variegated plant out of this. This is that Dracaena up close, or let me let, remove that for you, the Dracaena up close. I really like that it's got this complex three color around the leaves, quite mesmerizing. One, but this for me is a little bit more sexy. I guess the grass is always greener on the other side, right? And this is really interesting, huh? This is actually a fern and it's supposed to look like that, I'm pretty sure. New leaves at the same time that is almost like this, I don't know what this color is, almost like an ostrich or salmon pink in color and I'm pretty sure this will hard yeah it's already hardening up and turning green so this was probably I'm guessing I don't see any pruning here though but it must have lost a lot of foliage or maybe yeah I have a feeling maybe it's just aggressively cut and now it's growing in revenge sometimes they do that this is beautiful it's unrolling but the, all of this all of this growth that we're seeing now this is still pretty new and they're growing at the same time imagine if someone did a time lapse of this it would look like a firework bursting into life. Oh man. This is a beautiful Dracaena. Really, really gorgeous. Look at that. And they do well indoors too, but I, I think I overwatered my, I have been neglecting my plant in my previous home. So a lot of them were in decline. This is 200 baht. 200 baht. It's actually a pretty good price for this size. And it's got baby already. For this size, this is a very good price. Oh my gosh, I, I'm so tempted to bring some back. Oh my gosh, my plant hoarding tendencies. But this one plant, I don't know the ID. I'm, I'm killing mine really bad. Let me study this. There's no price on it or anything. Uh, in Indonesia, we call it Siri Papua. It's got a beautiful red back. The flower looks like that. It dangles. But mine is declining badly. I don't know why. Um, but it is a stunning plant actually, if you look at it. But it does become leggy over time. And that is not a sexy look on them when they become a bit leggy. They look much nicer as a shrub, closer to the top of the pot. This is a beautiful Dracaena. I think, I don't know, I've seen the ones that they call tricolor, but this is something else. This, I think it's not the tricolor. Is it? 
Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful though. Look at how nice and sharp the leaves are. And their growth pattern, they, let me see if I can hold one up. They have this classic Dracaena trunk down below so they can grow upwards. I kind of also like to have only one, one Dracaena trunk and then you cut it off and it will just branch out whichever way. I kind of don't like Dracaenas to start off with many trunks in the bottom. I don't know why, it's just me. But if you want to fill out like a uh, ground cover, you want to fill up a space, you do need a lot of these cuttings and they're quite easy to propagate. But the fact that they're all the same size, the same height here, it's going to suggest that they're probably not vegetatively, no, they're somewhere back here. They're probably not vegetatively propagated. In T Thailand, a lot of these plants, they're very, very cheap because they are tissue cultured. Probably, I don't know, maybe even by seed, but I don't see Dracaenas flowering profusely all the time. This is going to suggest that they're probably not grown from seed. These are Colocasia and maybe a lot of you guys already know about this plant because I do mention it quite a bit in my channel. This is the white lava, it used to be very expensive. And that is the ferrous mask. I think somebody's trying to sell me ice cream here. Hi. Hello. How cute, there's an ice cream lady. So basically these Colocasias in general, they like to sit in water. They love full sun. And they can become really beautiful. They can have like beautiful, nice, brightly colored leaves and patterns and even variegation. I think some of these are variegated. This is the mojito, I think. Yeah. Look at the clump of bromeliad here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I'm wondering where they, they're finding these baskets. I want to bring some home. Because one, you can like turn them around like a dim sum table. <laughs> But a lot of like epiphytic plants, you can just grow them in cocoa chips and have them like be mounted on these. Again, I've not seen these in any garden set. Oh, these are actually, I think this used to be a fan. Like, you know, like the fan, like a t desk fan cover. That's what it is. <laughs> this is hilarious, you guys. Tillandsia usnoides and a Tillandsia, I don't know what up there, but then I actually visited a Tillandsia supplier in my last trip to Bangkok. I can link that video up here because these Tillandsias are actually really fascinating and to see them grown in millions and millions of stock, very, very visually satisfying. This here is a very simple, very humble and effortless sort of styling in my opinion, but it's comforting and there are a lot of really easy plants here. This Apishkia, for example, it's just going to take off on its own very, very easily, very quickly. There are some beautiful variegated anthuriums. If you are open-minded to like ones that are not beautifully variegated, not to say that these are not beautifully variegated, but they are actually coming in cheap because a lot of them were grown from seedlings and thousands and thousands of them are just getting thrown away because they, are, they don't have the desirable traits. So there are actually a lot of them in stock and you can actually really find them for cheap. The beautiful Syngonium. Uh, Syngonium. Uh, Syngonium podophyllum variegatum. This one has chubby leaves. This used to be quite expensive, but look at that. It's become quite common now and it's quite a beautiful feature up the pole. Some homalominas over there. Homalominas are also very inexpensive for landscaping. They also fill up the space really, really fast. Beautiful begonias are oftentimes cultivated and selectively bred for their flowers. And these are actually very inexpensive plants, the Cryptanthus, but when you have them displayed like this, they look really, really priceless. I would have probably given it like a, a completely white pot, maybe as uh, for dramatic effect, like a white shiny pot that is like glossy in contrast to these matte leaves. But they do form clumps on their own. This is actually, if you, if you plant just one, they will form clumps like this without any kind of effort. And there are more of these ferns, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that. This is beautiful with the sun hitting it from an angle. Look at all the fronds. Look at these lines, the fine lines on each of these fronds. And the color is just really stunning. And again, I think these were pruned hard very recently because usually with ferns, they die back. So you would have like some browning or whatever, and then, you know, they would decline over time. But the fact that these were missing their previous fronds, completely bald, it's going to suggest that it were probably pruned off. And maybe these plants are coming back uh, because of stress. 
That's this little Look at that. Oh my god it's Really really incredible Really really incredible Oh I love that they're really really Springing into life A lot of life These kinds of plants Are ones that actually bring me joy Plants that are always teeming with energy With joy Sometimes our rarer plants, especially our slower growing plants, don't give us this kind of satisfaction. Gorgeous philodendron heteraceums. That is the Brazil, that is the yellow, neon yellow. How nice, like that. They're very, very inexpensive here in Thailand. If you give them enough light, the new leaves come out beautiful and pink. This is quite stunning as well. It's next to a water feature. The leaves are like silvery. The growth pattern, I don't know. I'm not familiar with the flower looks like this. So I'm not familiar with this genus. Sometimes it's not that difficult. The leaves are actually very firm. Now, no one's talked about these plants for a, lot, for a while, the spider plants. Clarophytum comosum, variegated. These clumps have clumps. Look at that. This is insane. I actually haven't made, been able to grow mine to have clumps like this. I, I used to keep propagating them and then at some point I was neglecting them but they can absolutely turn into this you guys Piper Crocatum a lot of people comment on these whenever I post these very easy Piper to take care of they vine around like crazy this is the Piper Sylvaticum I think if my memory serves me well also insanely beautiful but then I do prefer this one it's got that amazing uh, pink coloration on them and that's reflective nature of the leaves that I can't find words to describe and they also have a red underside and look at that over here when you let them climb up a moss pole or a trellis they become this they become a full bush now we tend to let our philodendron micans come down but here it is actually coming up this is actually what they want to do so somebody tried to let them trail down and it just found its way and now it's attached itself to the wall and it's going to climb up it actually can get Pretty big leaves, not massive by any means, but these leaves can get huge. Look at this piper again, under it's a bit of direct sunlight. There's a little, a bit of direct light streaming through an opening, and it's really, really quite something. And did I mention that they have red underside that is really, really beautiful? Maybe because these plants are so fast growing, they really cannot take off as a more collector's type rare plant shame because they're really 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 easy to care for really stunning they bring a lot of joy now these are actually coleus but my gosh look at the flowers i think the flower here is way more intense than the leaves if you look at the leaves they're actually quite dull they're very very dull looking and they're actually quite small but the flower to leaf ratio is pretty intense on this huh it's got me really rethinking this genus entirely and the problem with them, however, is that when you do have them flower like this, they tend to self-pollinate and they will set seed and the babies will show up everywhere. And this is also probably why they are so easy to hybridize. There's many hybrids of them. I'm pretty sure this many diversity or uh, species doesn't exist in the nature, but they're just pretty unstoppable when you have them like grown and mushed up together with the other species from the same genus. This place is my coffee. Look at the entrance and I actually quite enjoy the view from the side as people are walking by. There's just a lot of... Sure, so the Dishkidias really do make a difference. The Oyan, very good. They are very... Indonesians, we haven't figured out how to do these cheap because they're actually considered... Well, they're not expensive by any means, but they're not some plants that you would just use in a landscaping setting. Some Ripsal here, bromeliads everywhere up giving it a little bit pop of a color very simple this is actually very very inexpensive and all these trailing ferns behind to just kind of welcome people very very inexpensive to set up but it's very very thoughtfully done there's a little pot here it looks like a beehive but it's got like a dishkidia oyanta hanging out of it there's a little bit of a mouth here where it's coming out from and there's this plant that's trailing down producing really beautiful variegated leaves 
how wonderful. This is all variegated, this is all albino. And some of them are a little bit more green. How nice, and it's like trailing all the way down. And one thing that I really enjoy is like watching this. Look at that. There's actually a lot of action happening. People are buying the plants, they're negotiating sometimes, they're packing things, they're selecting like some of the nicer ones or the ones that really work with their space and just packing them up and then all these plants are going into good homes and the people are just excited. Do you remember the joy when you actually bought a plant and you have it sitting in your trunk in your back seat or whatever and you're driving home? That is the best feeling ever and I know I, I haven't done that in a while because I have hoarded for so long. I've hoarded many plants. This looks like a beautiful, I don't know what this is. Um, yeah, I really don't. I thought it was a hibiscus but it's not from afar. But that joy, you know, I, 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 I see that on people and it projects back to me. Cute little lotus. Look at that. This one's about to open. Now these are actually really pretty. If you look at the flowers, they actually have flowers in there. And I actually watched a documentary a while back. I think it might have been a BBC David Attenborough documentary, but I could be wrong. But they actually showed these plants, these flowers. I don't know if it's ultraviolet light. I don't know if it's ultraviolet rays or something else. But when you turn those lights on, which is what they actually, the bees actually see, this turns into like something else. This color is actually not for our eyes. They are meant for other purposes, but we just have, happen to see them as these beautiful flowers. But yeah, again, they're adapted to pollinate, basically to have maximized, to have maximum pollination with a candidate of their choice. If they have evolved in parallel to a species to have a symbiotic relationship to help them pollinate. This is the wonderful things about plants that sometimes even I forget. Now, those are some beautiful hibiscus. Roses. These are actually trending right now. And look at them, they look like a nice little chiffon dress, like a French, I don't know, or a pink lace dress. A lot of, a lot of fashion couture has been inspired by these Arium flowers. Wow, look at that. This is actually really beautiful. And as you can see, they actually modified leaves. A little spadix coming out of it. And this is really, really interesting. I'm really thinking in my head now how I, how I could p potentially bring this home. I really want this. I haven't seen this back home in Indonesia. Although I know that if I tried, I can probably find it. These are crotons. But this one particularly stuck out to me. It looks a little bit like a aglonema actually. Look at the electrifying color on these. This is pretty wild. I have always killed every single one of these that I've had. Maybe because they are not really good indoor plants. They really love full sun. And it's, that's an environment that I haven't been able to give any of my plants. Now these are close-up looks of more of these. Talansia. They always have these in coconut husks. And that's, I think, a good thing because these are very, very environmentally friendly. You don't require plastic pots. Even sometimes terracotta could also be and have an environmental cost to it. And this, I think something is trying to grow out of this. I don't know if it's the actual coconut trying to grow out of this. It might have been the actual bloody coconut trying to grow out of this. But they put a kadaka fern on top. And this one has a um, dendrobium orchid on top. And these, they're everywhere in Thailand. These Dishidia riskifolia. Oh my gosh. This is a plant that I really wish would be common in Indonesia. It brings me joy every time I see one of these. This is also amazing. I don't know what this plant is, but it's got these like phallic shaped leaves. And I think it's trying to flower already. This is actually about my knee length. So I think this is a plant that would not get tall or huge. Something we can tell because the plant reaches maturity by flowering. So we can tell this is probably already a mature plant. Some coleus, look at how beautiful. The leaves are actually super tiny, but they're beautiful. Now, I don't know what this one is, but okay, the leaves are actually interesting. And I have a feeling I've seen plants with this kind of leaf shape or growth pattern everywhere in landscaping. But this might have been something else because everyone, as you can see here, everybody is flowering. And this is probably not open yet. I'm guessing it fully opens and turns into something else. But look at that. As, just as a bed of them and they grow like this from a single trunk and they reach a certain height and they will flower pretty much at the same time. This is interesting. Comment down below if you know what this is. There are some interesting roses down below. These are actually very short. They are about my knee length as well. Sometimes roses can get 
huge they can become like a huge like mini tree or a bush or even something taller than us but this one's already flowering look at that it's flowering really well and the leaves are actually quite gorgeous as well i know next to nothing about roses care look at how intricate the leaves are here i don't know if this is going to vine out i think this is a new vine potentially yeah i think so this is a new vine that's coming out of there i love to just sit and study them because there's so many genuses i'm greedy like that i like to learn about all the genuses and how they do how to grow them how they can adapt to new environments how they've adapted in their native habitats but these are probably hybrids a lot of roses have been selectively bred and heavily hybridized for certain desirable traits like look at these ones here there are a lot more roses here interesting right i'm really really rethinking roses let me know also i'm really curious to know if this can be grown indoors if you have like a really 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 bright window they will do well this is a chrysotemis pulchella one of my favorite plants actually uh they flower beautifully like this are they in the gisneriad family i don't know probably maybe not but the leaves are really really sunny it's very complicated colors on these very very forgiving plant they can take medium light they can take a bit of direct sunlight i don't, I don't know what conditions you need to give them to let them flower like this but they also have really really gorgeous maroon underside i don't know something about me whenever i see this in landscaping or in somebody's like house plant collection it really just calls out to me these are some very happy and large calathea or jopertia lancifolia let me show you my hand for comparison these are very tall. They are sitting at about my, like right, up, right below my hips actually. And they can absolutely get massive, these guys. I still struggle with mine. This is a plant that I really have not mastered and I wonder what it takes to grow them this big. Maybe you need to grow them in like soil, in like very, very good conditions. And usually up in the mountains, I find that they do really well in cooler but humid climates, in slightly higher elevations. Caladium, Thai beauty some alocasias this actually is a really really nice setup over here with some of these anthuriums that are always in flower this anthurium has really really dark flower and i know i said the word flower but these are actually really not flower. i feel guilty every time i say it but i think flower is something that people would understand better than if i said that these were spedex more of them over here they actually make really good cut flowers as well the flowers can last quite a while in a vase and water so if you have these in the backyard and you want a fresh supply of flowers in your bathroom dining room bedroom whatever these are also a plant to have a gorgeous stromanthi triostar and this is why i really love coming to these places look at the composition right here this is quite nice quite beautiful with the bromeliad because this also has a little bit of a fuchsia underside that is very similar to the bromeliads over there you see that there's a kind of deliberation and planning here that is effortless but you don't notice it until you get really up close to them and i actually want to spend a bit of time with this coleus because there's many many varieties there's these ones that are actually very very twisty they curl in how wonderful is that if you walk really fast by it you will not have noticed all these beautiful details that it has and then that one back there very phallic shape but very gorgeous veins that is like very very neon yellow very reminiscent of like the epipremnum aureum the golden pothos but this is far far brighter these guys they love full sun if you don't give them direct sunlight they will lose some of the coloration this is also beautiful it's got that darth vader vibes doesn't it for those of you star wars fans maybe this is one for you this one that have like really round leaves this is particularly interesting because if you look at it it's got this sharp point i really wonder what these murderous sharp points are made for there's a bit of a nice rim around the edge of the leaf yeah again comment down below if you know why these thorns this one single thorn exists stunning and then these ones with like narrow leaves with like these dreamy splotches of yellow there's also somewhere over here they form like closer clumps rounder leaves there's literally a croton for everyone did i say croton or did i say coleus earlier i might have called these coleus earlier these are crotons apologies for that actually i've been like working non-stop 
before coming here. Oh, those are those flowers we, we shot this earlier. Oh my god, I'm obsessed with this now. I'm obsessed. What is this? Let me know what this is. And also not just what this is, but how do you get it to flower? This is about my knee height. So these plants probably start flowering at a knee height. But anyways, my story was that I have been like getting ready for this trip, getting my house renovated. And then I've had this intense three days well, of traveling and also doing the show and doing a lot of really wonderful episodes that my brain you now is literally fried completely fried this is also beautiful i believe this is also a croton please, so please pardon me if i say something wrong in the next few episodes to come i tend to correct myself too i'm a self-correcting person but feel free to correct me either it's fun to kind of like point out some of the mistakes i'm very open-minded in case you haven't noticed i read all the comments whatever you say to me if you want to just say hi this is also stunning look at that the older leaves are yellow Something tells me though that they may have lost its luster because it's getting not enough light. Usually in my experience, when you give them like really, really nice full sun and you bring them like to a, a bright shade area perhaps, they start, yeah, you see that? It's starting to lose over here and the new leaves, they start to become completely yellow with green and losing all that vibrant red. Not, a, I wouldn't recommend this for indoor for sure now this is really interesting the leaves look a little bit like the H. Cananthus. I don't know about the flowers but it's flowering beautifully and it's like kind of like reaching out outwards of the pot and then it's just handing you the flower kind of like that it's like I don't know if you know what I mean it's like cascading down and then it's like coming back up here here is my flower this is just how they do and it's really really nice to see very soothing I'm having the best time right now actually. I don't know about you guys, but thank you so much for coming with me on these tours. I would have been so alone. Imagine if I was by myself. This is an interesting Strelitzia. And it's got this beautiful new pink down the middle. Uh, and these are the newer leaves. The older leaves are become a little bit more dull. Look at that again. This is only my knee height. This could be a potentially a dwarf type of strelitzia because usually they become tall all right so this is another intersection there's some potting store over here there's a terracotta pot store over here which is probably not a good idea for me to visit because i'm a terracotta pot hoarder but i really want to show you look at how nicely it's lined up here all right okay i guess we're gonna take a minute to look at this up close and i also want to finish up my thoughts earlier i was just saying that i, I want to thank you guys for coming with me and if you're still watching now thank you so much i really appreciate it because viewership has come down a lot in the last few months i'm not sure what's happened maybe you guys didn't like my content anymore maybe you guys are not as interested in plants anymore uh, comment down below to let me know if there's something that you want me to cover instead uh, there's something that you want to see more of me doing or if you're perfectly happy with the contents the way they are now and let me know how you're doing with your houseplant collection maybe shopping i believe everybody's taking a pause now because i think the market is slowing down as we resume our lives two of you two or three of you have commented that you guys don't want me to talk about politics at all but a lot of you have actually commented and said you know they were really glad that i called out to some of the events that are happening and maybe a little bit of my thoughts on it here's the thing i'm trying to i will try to keep these thoughts or these opinions very very brief which i have in the past it's always been very very short and i've always been careful to put a disclaimer that these thoughts are mine and mine alone and that you guys are more than welcome to disagree and with that being said i really want to say that i'm sorry about what happened in south korea the news came out this morning that something tragic and terrible has happened i think humanity is probably overpopulated and these sad events, this tragic loss of life that is senseless, is probably going to happen more and more over time and we, unless we correct our ways, unless we do something, unless we do better. So I don't have the solution, I'm not a politician and this again, this is not a political channel, it's my thoughts and I want to express that I'm really really sorry that these things happen and there was also a stampede in Indonesia a month ago that was really really sad and tragic. Please be careful everybody watch out for each other avoid crowded spaces and keep your eyes on the news don't don't believe everything you hear on the news this is cute this is growing together with the cacti this is a drosse, drosse, drostinia 
uh, keep your eyes peeled watch out for each other take care of each other you know the world needs that now be kind be patient uh, oh my god this, this store is actually quite nice i'm really glad i came in look at this succulent display over here this is really really wonderful and all these golden barrel cactus here this is bringing me a lot of joy yeah this this uh pot shapes and sizes are new to me i haven't seen them before because I guess every region makes them differently, they have different requirements, but look at how beautiful the back area is. I see like more interesting pots. Do come by if you're in Chiang Mai, if you're in Thailand. Chiang Mai is a beautiful, beautiful city. Let me tell you that, it's nothing like Bangkok. Bangkok is great for like energy, for city vibes. There's a lot of plant trade going on in Bangkok, a lot of serious plant shops and plant market going on. But Chiang Mai, oh, everybody's laid back. Everyone is like moving at a slower pace. The food here is cheaper. Sorry, this is becoming a travel vlog suddenly that you didn't ask for. But the food here is generally cheaper. This is, looks like a little ficus. Yeah, it's got these like berries. So what was I saying? Oh my, God, I keep getting lost in my own train of thoughts. But do come to Chiang Mai because it is very different from Bangkok. There are a lot of really, really nice beaches in Thailand, but these mountainous region there's a lot of beautiful temples great food very very cheap food the agriculture sector here is amazing look at this setup right here this is such a nice view there's like if you shoot at every angle in this area everything is just stunning look at that there's like another back area i'm gonna shoot through this mesh because i don't know if i want to go in there there you go we actually saw a lot of cacti succulent in yesterday's show already so i don't want to overwhelm you guys yeah and if you do come to chiang mai there is a sunday market so do come here on sunday jingjiang jingjai market i wish my mom and irene is on my irene is actually off babysitting my mom thank you so much irene for hanging out and taking my mom out so they're shopping for fashion food souvenirs bags and everything jewelry Jingjia Market is really, really fun. I actually stopped by earlier, but this is right across the street. This whole area is right across the street from Jingjia Market. So come by on a Sunday, especially. There's like some night markets that are really nice on Saturday night, Sunday nights. So visit Chiang Mai on a weekend if you can. But this plant market, Kam Tiang, is actually open every day. So you're gonna see the same plants every day. It's not like a special occasion. But then again, the Jingjai market is a Sunday thing and it is right across the street. So I highly recommend for you guys to stop by. I'm gonna quickly walk in there with you guys. And I might have to close. Oh, this is so cute. This is so cute, you guys, look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm really having the best time here. And then there's a back area here. I think there are people eating there, so I'm not gonna um, disturb them. But look at this little plant store area back here. The family actually lives here, I think. They actually live here and tend to the store. Really, really wonderful. I love this, this soothing. This color tone, being around terracotta pots, it really brings me joy. Maybe because these are going to be future homes of plants, if you know what I mean. It's like some people that likes to go to open houses for like new homes. This is <laughs> like that for me. Because these are actually homes for plants, future homes of plants. Ooh, and uh, this is actually the front of the shop. This is where the ladies were eating back there again. It's quite a wonderful display, if you ask me. Hello. Oh, you're here. Hi, what's up? Are you shopping or are you? Uh, yeah, I go shopping from Palladio by Shears. Okay, can I, can I show people what you bought? This is the shop that you bought from? Yes. And this I is their stock? Yes. And this is what you bought? Uh, no. no, not all. I not all. Take four plans. Oh, in your bag here. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'll insert your information I'm, on the screen. I'm Kui from Vietnam. Yes. And so, I am the plant collector. Yes, nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah. Enjoy the caladium. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> all right, so I guess there are some interesting caladiums here, and I probably know next to nothing about the names of these. There are very, very many shapes, colors, hybrids. This one, actually, I tried to zoom in earlier. This is a particularly interesting one. It's a little bit deformed, if you ask me. It's got this weird shape to it. Like, look at that, it's like deformed. But if you're into this kind of thing, maybe this is one for you. And then down here, there's some more interesting varieties. This is actually beautiful. This is actually quite something. Every leaf is different. And the thing with caladiums is that because they're so widely hybridized, that sometimes you buy a caladium and when you propagate it, even the babies are gonna turn out different. This is also really stunning. And this, this is the first time I'm seeing them. 
These are like long leafed caladiums. I wonder if they will ever become like these, I don't know what you call it, arrow shaped leaves at some point. I don't think they will. Oh my gosh, Discudia ruskifolia, variegata. They're everywhere in Thailand. This is the Dishkidia numularia. You've seen me talk a lot about these in my channel before, but in case you haven't, in case you're new to the channel, these are really, really beautiful Dishkidias, and they are really widely available in Thailand. Very inexpensive. And my God, these are all Aglonemas and Theriums. This is a beautiful shop. And they're packing up these guys. This is a Diefenbachia. And they're going to nice homes. I love watching this. I love watching this. Like, look at them. Where are they going? You know? And sometimes when I go to restaurants, hotels and whatever, and I, I kind of appreciate them being set up indoor, outdoors or whatever, they all come from somewhere and they come from shops like these. Look at that. A lot of anthurium flowering beautifully. This is really cute too, all these hanging wind chimes. Really joyful. Looks like a little bit of a cutesy ones over here. <laughs> I don't think these are like copyright infringement because I don't know these cartoon characters. They probably might have been an original creation here. African violets, I think. But the flowers, this is not, um, I don't know, I'm confused now. I, I thought that these were African violet by the leaves. But the flower <laughs> looked like this. Please, 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 somebody comment down below. Let me know what these guys are. Did I just sing that out? I might have just... <laughs> By the way, a little thing that you don't know about me, a little trivia, is that I'm a very, very good songwriter. I'm a really good song composer. If you put on any like, like background music, like I can compose a song right on the spot. Yeah, that's one of my superpowers. Not many people know that, and I do write really good songs. I used to write really good songs, but I'm not... I'm not a good singer, per se. I'm an okay singer, but I'm not amazing. And um, what else is that? I don't have the confidence to, to, to face people or to just perform or things like that. So th I never actually pursued a career in music. My brother is a jazz drummer and my mom is a pianist. And I just somehow inherited that musical gene. I used to have a keyboard and I tried to learn it, but I, I lost patience. But whenever I, I have music on, I could like very easily have come up with an alternative for the music. I could write an entire song very quickly in my head. That's something that you don't really need to know. These are all cheap, but 150 baht for each aglonema. I'm gonna pick out one random pot, like right here, right by my feet. This is 150 baht. This is amazing. And there's some of the uh, all green ones. It's one of my favorite ones. I struggle with, I have one single vine that I'm rescuing in the water. This is 150 baht, but this is a big, big pot. Hello. Hi. This is a massive pot already. If I lived in Thailand, I would have actually just bought this instead of trying to rescue that single one that I have already had. Plants in Thailand are in fact way cheaper than they are in Indonesia. These are all again, 150, everything here. This is why in Thailand, there's a, just such a teeming plant market and people are not hesitant to use plants in any setting possible. There is a huge clump of Dishkidia in my hotel lobby that I'm staying at now. It's getting no light. That Dishkidia is not gonna make it there unless they have a really good rotation, care, uh, rotation system, different kind of care. But then I have a feeling if you lose that plant, they will just get another one. It's not a big deal. This is beautiful aglonema over here. We're gonna quickly go back there to see all these other 150 baht plants over there. This is a philodendron, gigantium, I think, 150. This can get massive. This is still a baby, can get absolutely massive. But I don't think these are the gigantium because it's got red petiole. So I don't know what this one is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Different bakia, that different bakia we saw up front. Let me get this one. This is 150 baht. It's like pretty big size already, actually. And these are also beautiful. Look at this yeah, under the light, when the light is hitting it just right. This is really beautiful. Look at that on the underside. I don't know if these are aglonemas or Diefenbachias. I actually don't, but these are 150 baht. This is also very simple. Look at that. Just a simple white rim around the edge of the leaves. If I lived here, honestly, I would just buy them every month, every few months and then 
I will, I will, I will maybe not like let go of the pot. I might actually bring empty pots and let them fill up the plants in the pot and just like have them styled around. I would really love to be an interior scaper or a landscaper actually, but I've already got too much going on in my life that I can't do it. There's too much that I wanted to do. From this episode, you can kind of tell that I have, I am a jack of all trades. I'm very, again, I don't want to praise myself. I really don't, but I, I'm actually surprisingly good at everything. I'm good at uh, photography, filmmaking, at, at these plant stuff. I'm good at music, musically, I'm very good. Designing, I'm very good at graphic design and things like that. So I'm very confused sometimes. I have, you know, when you have too many things that you want to do, things that you are able to do and do well, it's not a good thing. It's much better if you can focus on just the one thing and stick to it and find joy in it and be the best at it. I wish I was like that. Is that weird? Let me know if that's weird to you. This is also a beautiful Aglonema 80 baht. This is a much smaller one, uh, compact. Beautiful, really, really stunning. And there's some Calatheas up there. I'm curious to see how much they cost. Sorry, I might be a bit jerky because I'm shooting all this in one take. So you know I'm not editing anything good out. This is the Calathea, not the black lipstick maybe? Maybe a black lipstick, huh? I don't see the price on this. But this is interesting, look at this. The underside is normally like reddish, but this is almost black. And the, the top as well, it's like this nice purple. This is really fascinating. It's a little bit different. I wonder if it's the same species, just grown in different conditions. So that they're so dark in their foliage. This uh, Jopertia mosaica. Always a pleasure. Easy growing. This is um, probably not a good example of a Calathea. If you have grown this well, it doesn't mean you can grow the other types of Calathea as well. Because these are slightly different care. This is the, one of the harder ones, the Mekayana. I wonder how they can grow them with such dark leaves. This is bluish green leaves. This is not normal. This is where I'm, I'm like, this does not compute. But they're known for this beautiful pattern on the leaves. But do you see that on the screen? This is actually blue. This is not green. Yeah. And they look kind of like bluish or maroonish like this one. Like the back of this Alocasia. I think this is the Amazonica. This is so interesting to me. Huh. Alocasia Zabrina. Very narrow leaves on these. They put out babies like crazy. They see here. This is the main plant and it's already put out one, two, three, three babies. And they look really nice in a clump like this. Look at that. Oh, with a triangle. So I can't really reach it because they're like tangled into each other. But they look really, really beautiful. Some cute baby plants. This is probably that ficus we saw earlier. Some phytonia. This is the Peperomia metallica. A difficult to grow but beautiful Peperomia. They're nice to be enjoyed from down below. That this beautiful pink or reddish underside and beautiful metallic silver down the center of the leaves. Not easy, again. I like these little pots. They <laughs> the Salaginellia, they're becoming quite popular now. A lot of people are talking about this. The, I saw the variegated ones yesterday. So I guess this is probably one of the plants that I would say would be the next trending plants. Not easy to care for, but not terribly difficult as well. Alocasia lauterbachiana, I think these are the babies. I don't know if this is the same species because it's got like dark petiole and dark stem. So I don't know if this is the lauterbachiana or not. But the fact that there's so many of them are, and all in the same size, it's going to suggest that they are probably from tissue culture. And the thing about tissue culture, and I mentioned that in the last episode, is that a lot of wonderful mutations and varieties have been discovered in tissue culture. And it is actually moving the plant market forward now with all these interesting mutations of plants. Uh, maybe these Zabrinas are potentially also from tissue culture. Do you see that? They're all the same level. There's many of them in stock. And maybe some of the narrow leaves or whatever, they were found in tissue culture and then people like the trait and then they kept multiplying it. So now we're having many forms of the same plant. It can be overwhelming. I'm actually getting a bit overwhelmed and maybe this is because I've been exposed to these plants maybe more than the average person. Are these roses? These are probably really, really compact roses. Quite beautiful, look at these. Sorry, I keep interrupting myself all the time. I'm sorry, <laughs> can't help it, but what I was saying is that I'm actually a little bit overwhelmed by the varieties that are coming out, the mutations, and a lot of them 
are very expensive just because it's got like really weird mutations and like the only like two or three people have it it becomes really really expensive but this is also the one thing that is generating bu generating buzz and interest in the plant collecting world in this hobby so there's pros and cons to tissue culture if you ask me pro it only because I really think that more people should access plants and access them in an affordable manner. We should all have more plants in our homes. We should like hoard plants together. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, do not hoard plants, but have a sustainable collection that you can manage that will elevate your space and that will decorate your space so you don't have to rely on some of these plastic or environmentally unfriendly things to decorate your space. Cute little Tradescanti Ananuk. Look at that. And we can tell this is not tissue cultured because it's been cut over here. These are all cuttings. I have a video on how to propagate and care for these. They're very easy to propagate. But I'm actually very interested these days because there's such a transition in the market. So I'm always curious to see if a plant is tissue cultured, if it's vegetatively propagated, or if it's pollinated and sown by seed. Because I think there's such a weird, it's a weird phase now. Oh, that plant shop is actually kind of cute. And by the way, I'm a little bit late. I'm supposed to meet them like I think a few minutes ago, but I have to rush back that way. But I'm gonna take my time and, and ex experience these shops. Since I came this way, there's an orchid booth here. Since I came all this way already, might as well. Look at these. Pause the video and, and zoom in on anything that it might interest you because I can't spend too much time here. But this is a very kitschy type store. Oh my gosh, I love it. A lot of succulents hanging out here by the ledge. This is cute. And sometimes they can actually trail down and produce like rosettes down below. What a cute little store. This is bringing me a lot of joy. This is a fern. <laughs> this will sprout ferns out of this. Oh my gosh. This is hilarious. Oh my gosh. There's a bit of Disney action going on here. So if you love Disney and you love plants, maybe this is what you want to do. This is some terrariums. Look at all these decorations back here. Wow. That is amazing. Look at all these. You can have these in your terrariums or in your potted plants and elevate. There's a lot of like quotes here. They can just stick onto your pots. I'm really glad I came into this store. There's so many cuteness cuteness overload here oh my gosh that's like Sin Chan <laughs> if you're Asian you'll know this character he's like hilarious I grew up reading his comic books it's not appropriate for kids per se his comics are very 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 offensive and suggestive as well these are really really cute butterflies clips have this like kind of hanging out in your garden now I did mention in a previous video that one way that you could actually double your plant collection without actually buying more plants is to have mirrors because now you can not only double the space but also the plant collections that you have. Cute little Opuntia back here. This is from a little clump. Ooh, something jumped out at me. What was that? A little... All right, I'm actually done vlogging, I think, because Irene just texted me, they're ready, so I'm walking back towards them. It's actually cloudy now. It was so hot and sunny, it was like, I'm drenched. I'm really, really drenched. Motorcycle. <laughs> I'm really, really drenched in sweat. Uh, and I'm wearing a shirt that is not particularly absorbent. I think this is synthetic fiber. So this is, it's like a sauna in there. It's really, really sticky and nasty, but you didn't need to hear that, did you? Uh, I had a, a really good time. I enjoyed yesterday with all these amazing rare plants, rare discoveries and meeting all these really enthusiastic collectors and wonderful people that are bidding for these really expensive rare plants. But these common plants, also very exciting. Look at the way that they have been displayed. Look at all this interesting diversity out here and the fact that we can buy them and enjoy them without really stressing out. Because yesterday, some of the plants that are expensive can be a bit stressful to own. And a lot of them were actually bought for the purpose of investment. Like people are actually buying them because they know that when they buy a certain rare plant at that kind of price, they have to really make a turnaround really, really fast for them. So it's a bit stressful. It's not my kind of thing. It's exciting to watch, but yeah, this is what really actually brings me joy. I think plants should be something that everyone enjoys. There's different ways to appreciate them. 
And sometimes we don't have to buy everything. We don't have to own everything. We can enjoy them, we can view them in places like this. And I forgot to mention that over there, there were many stores that I went to where the bosses would, they would think that I was a customer, they would come out and greet me and when they saw that I was vlogging, they didn't ask me a question, they didn't ask me to, what, what was I doing or anything. They smiled at me, some of them even pointed out to me the plants that they liked, that they wanted me to film. That is just the wonderful thing about going out, exploring, and I have an appointment tomorrow at the Queen's Secret Botanical Garden. So someone will show me around and I, I will figure out, I haven't figured out what I wanted to shoot there yet, but I will probably let him lead the way. Let him show me what he's interested in, tell his story and what the mission of the garden is and all that good stuff. But I'm gonna really let you go because I'm, uh, I'm late and I don't wanna get lost and there are traffic everywhere. Thank you so much for watching again and have a nice one. Bye-bye.